Hey everyone, John here from Cardboard of the Rings, and I have got a treat for you. That's right, thanks to listener AJ from the UK, we are going to be going on a little adventure together through Lord of the Rings, the card game, the magazine, which is a living, well, card game, magazine, adventure, quest, thing, by Hachette Printworks, sorry, Hachette Partworks, out of the UK. Now this was a UK exclusive, so all of us in the US and anyone that's not in the UK, we couldn't get our hands on this. But again, thanks to listener AJ for sending these along so that we can share them with all of you. So I have in my possession the four issues that were published. Now, this is an interesting product. This is a product that's aimed at new players to introduce them to Lord of the Rings, the card game. Uh, and well, what we're gonna do in this series of videos is, is see what this is about and see if it would actually be effective in teaching someone how to play this game. Now, I've been playing this game a long time and I can tell you Lord of the Rings is kind of a complicated game. I mean, you it, you have to not only pay attention to what cards are in your hand and in your play area, but you're also playing against the encounter deck. Really, you are providing all the brain power in making this game go, especially if you're playing solo. So I'm intrigued by the prospect of this product, but I have to be honest, I, I don't know how it's going to work out. I've sort of flipped through the, the first issue, and I know Chad did a video, video a few months ago looking at the first issue, and it's it's something. So here's, here's how we're going to do this. I am going to set aside everything I know about Lord of the Rings, the card game. I'm going to pretend that I'm a new player. I'm going to for, forget everything I know about playing this game. How's that any different from normal, John? Just beating Chris to that comment in the comment section. <clears throat> yeah. Love you, buddy. Um, but I'm gonna set aside everything I know about playing this game and try to approach this as if I were a new player, as if I had never played this game before. Now, if you are a new player, and if this is your first exposure to Lord of the Rings, the card game, which is a living card game by Fantasy Flight Games, whew, gotta say the whole thing. If this is your first exposure to this awesome game, welcome, I'm glad you're here. I hope this is instructive, but I have a feeling you really should check out the new player advice videos that Chad has posted on this channel. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And you know what? While you're at it, while you're at it, maybe find Cardboard of the Rings in your favorite podcast app and click the subscribe button there too. Yeah, you know, I, I think you have to say that these days on YouTube. I don't know. Anyway, let's take a look at what comes in this issue. So with issue one, what we have here is you have the magazine itself. You've got a, a little trifold, a not so little trifold actually, uh, showing you all the things that are part of the subscription. Then for the cards, you have hero cards, your player deck, and an encounter deck. You also have a set of counters. Now, one thing you don't have is this, a threat tracker. I, I don't know. So I guess just so much for threat. <sighs> anyway, sorry, new player. I don't know what a threat tracker is, guys. Why do you need extra numbers in this game? I don't need, I don't need math. So what we are gonna do is we're gonna go through all of this, uh, again, as if I were a new player getting, to, getting a chance to learn this game for the first time. So, uh, real fast, I'll show you the, the trifold, because it is kind of cool. It shows you all the things that um, will be coming, I guess, in, in future issues, which again, there's nothing after the first four issues. It was a trial run thing, so none of the stuff you see here has any realistic chance of ever being produced, as far as we know right now. But you do have, um, yeah, kind of a little explanation of some of the stuff. And there is some cool stuff, like a binder within card sleeve. Uh, you get eventually a playmat, a deck organizer. Like that, that would have been pretty cool stuff for a new player, I, I have to admit. But that's what the trifold is. So we'll set that aside, because that has nothing to do with the game. But what we are going to do is start our way through this uh, magazine from the beginning. Now, one thing I will say is I'm not going to read any of the rule, or sorry, I'm not going to read any of the story sections. I assume by this point you're familiar with the story of Lord of the Rings. If you're not, go read the book. I'll wait. Yeah, this joke's not getting any funnier, is it? Okay, we're going to move on. I'm not going to read any of the story sections. 
but what I am going to do is go through the rules sections. So let's let's get started. Let's turn to beginning the adventure. Adventure one, the Black Riders. Beginning the adventure. In this first adventure, you will guide the four hobbits from Bag End to Buckleberry Ferry, from where Frodo plans to carry on to Crick Hollow before beginning the rest of his adventure. How it works. The next few pages provide a guided playthrough of the first adventure. We'll introduce the rules you need as you play. You'll get a feel for how the game works and get some top tips for success. I love how British that is. Top tips. In future issues, we'll return to look at all the rules in detail in the rules reference section, but you'll learn to play as you go. This issue's adventure is in four stages, so in effect you have four mini-games in one. Your adventure starts here at Bag End, Green Hill Country, Baum for Long, and Buckleberry Ferry. Put your special Gandalf card aside for now. It doesn't feature in this issue's playthrough, but will be key in your adventures in a later issue. Now, the golden rule. Ah, this, this sounds important. If you don't know, it doesn't matter. Okay. You, well, okay, fine. If you don't know, it doesn't matter. You'll see some terms in, on the cards in your collection which are unfamiliar or haven't been explained yet. Don't worry, because if you don't know, it doesn't matter. Hey! Great! Not all the rules on every card are needed in every adventure, so we'll introduce these new rules as and when they're needed. Don't shuffle those cards yet. The first time you play through an adventure, you should play with the cards in the order they come in. If you couldn't resist giving them a shuffle, uh, just put them in order on the number printed on the bottom left of the card's border. For this first adventure, you won't need all the cards. Take the cards numbered P19 to P43 and put them to one side for now. Okay, so that would be out of the player deck. P19 through P43. Okay, cool. I'll put those aside for now. All right. Now, setting up. Now you're ready to play. Here's how to set things up on your first adventure and get ready to lead the heroic little hobbits on their way out of the Shire. Step one, pop out the counters. Well, I'm not going to use these. Um, they are printed on a kind of a weird stock, and I don't need extra counters, so we'll set those to the side, and I will use my counters from my core set. I don't get to use these very often anymore. Oh, sorry, again, new player. Shh. All right. Uh, pop out the counters, place your heroes. Place your heroes. Can't start an adventure without heroes. Take your four hero cards and place them face up in a row in front of you. Hey. I have a fifth hero. Fatty. Check that out. I have a fifth hero. Fatty. We'll set him to, side, to the side for now. I assume we will need him later. Okay. Sort out the decks. Or sorry, no. Give Frodo the ring, step three. Dramatic moment. Card number E1 is the one ring. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. I mean, that is... That's pretty cool. Uh, E1 is the one ring. Give it to Frodo by sliding it under his hero card. Ah... Foil Frodo and Foil One Ring. That's neat. That's neat. Uh, okay, staging area. Leave plenty of area space in the center of the table to create what's known as the staging area. This is where you'll place new threats awaiting your heroes on their quest. Then we'll put the encounter deck here, and I'll put my hero deck here. Okay. Tell you what, I'm going to move these things this way a little bit so that you can see them a little bit better. We're going to modify the play space a little bit. Sort out the decks. The Lord of the Rings, the card game, uses two different decks of cards. The player deck with the ring on the back and the encounter deck with the Eye of Sauron on the back. Put both decks ready at the side of the playing area. And then draw your starting hand. Draw the top three cards from your player deck and turn the page to begin the adventure. Okay? Frodo's Intuition. Halfling Determination. And smoke rings. I don't know what any of these do. Bag end. 
Your adventure begins at Bag End as Frodo and his companions set out on their way out of the Shire. Gaining resources and drawing cards. At the start of each turn, before doing anything else, place one resource token next to each of your heroes. This is their resource pool. I'm going to put them on the hero cards to conserve space here. Then draw one card from the top of your player deck and add it to your hand. Next, you can play any cards you want from your hand. Ah, Hobbit Pipe. That seems useful with a bunch of hobbits. If your heroes, your heroes only have one resource token each at present, but it's still enough to play some cards. Draw a hobbit pipe and add it to your hand. This, uh, this card has a cost of zero, so you can play it without spending any resource tokens. It's an attachment card, which means you attach it to one of your characters by placing it underneath the character's card. In this case, let's give it to Pippin. Hmm. Okay. Playing cards. When you play a card, there's normally a cost you have to pay in resource tokens shown at the top of the left of the card, which you also need a resource match, which means that the color and the symbol of the card you want to play need to match the color and symbol of the hero that spends the resources. In this case, it's a fiery orange one ring symbol, which matches Frodo's card. So Frodo can spend resources. Uh, Frodo can spend resource tokens to play this card, but the other hobbits can't. After playing cards, it's time to make some progress on your quest. You make progress by having your characters commit their willpower in order to earn progress tokens. You can commit some, none, or all of your characters. It's up to you. To commit a character to the quest, you must exhaust that character by turning the card 90 degrees. For this first turn of the game, commit Sam Gamgee and Pippin. This means you've still got Frodo and Mary ready to act if something unexpe unexpected happens. Okay? So, ready and exhausted. Cards exist in two states. Ready when they're upright and exhausted, indicated by turning a card 90 degrees. Once a card is exhausted, you can't exhaust it again until next turn, so think carefully before doing it. Okay, so we're going to exhaust Sam and Pippin. So Sam exhausts, a little crowded here, and Pippin. All right. Sam and Pippin. Once you've committed characters to the quest, it's time to find out what threats they will face along the way. This is called staging. To do this, you turn the top card of the encounter deck over. It's an evil crow! He sounds scary. An evil crow is an enemy card, so you should place it in the staging area. This doesn't mean the evil crow is attacking you, not yet anyway just that it's in the area and likely to make a nuisance of itself as you proceed on your way. The evil crow doesn't cause you any problems for now. Good to know. All right, step four. Now you get to determine how many progress tokens your heroes earn this turn. To do this, you compare the willpower of the characters committed to the quest to the willpower, or to the, to the threat of the enemies in the staging area. Sam has a willpower of three. Pippin has a willpower of two for a total of five. The evil crow has a threat of two. So five, your total willpower minus the two of the evil crow's threat gives us a final total of three. You can add three progress tokens to the progress track above. One, two, three. There are three spaces on the progress tracker for bag end. So your three progress tokens are enough to complete this part of the adventure. You're on your way. Turn the page for the next location. Hmm. <clears throat> Just might take those right back off. <sighs> All right. <clears throat> Green Hill Country. The next stage of the journey takes the hobbits through Green Hill Country. Alas, danger is not far away. At the end of each turn, you get to refresh your cards, readying any cards you exhausted last turn. Then it's time for another turn following all the same steps as before. So, um, okay, I guess, I guess that's what we do now before step one. Okay, so now step one, uh, give each of your heroes another resource token. All 
Right. Then draw another card from your player deck. It's another Frodo's Intuition. Since Frodo now has two resource tokens, and since you have two copies of the card in your hand, it seems like a good idea to play one. Take the two resource tokens from Frodo's pool and put them back in the pile. Place the card beside your heroes as a reminder. Each of your hero gets plus one willpower this turn, and you have four hobbits, so you get to draw four more cards. Oh, nice. You get you draw another Halfling Determination, and Hobbit Pipe, as well as Common Cause, and Grim Resolve. Since your willpower is so... Hmm, since your willpower is so high this turn, it seems like a good time to move on, so why not commit Frodo and Sam to the quest? Next, draw a card from the encounter deck. Oh, let's do that. Frodo is questing for two plus one, so he's questing for three. And Sam is questing for three plus one, so he's questing for four, so we have a total of seven. All right. Next, draw a card from the encounter deck. Oh, dear. It's a Black Rider. Place the Black Rider card in the staging area. Drawing the Black Rider forces you to take a hide test. You still have Merry and Pippin available, so exhaust them both to commit them to the hide test. I don't like exhausting all my heroes, thanks. They both have a willpower of two, with a plus one bonus this turn for a total of six. Next, discard the top two cards from the encounter deck and add up their threat. I guess hide two. Hide tells us that we have to exhaust the other characters, I guess. Uh, and then two tells us how many cards we have to discard from the encounter deck. That's my assumption. So discard the top two cards from the encounter deck and add up their threat. That's an evil crow and another black rider. Two plus four is six. Uh, the, even worse, the evil crow already in the staging area add, adds one to the hide value of each hide test you make. Ah. So you have to draw another card. You'll crow, add one to the hide value of each high test you make. All right, you have to draw another card. It's another Black Rider. Put these cards in the discard pile, not the staging area. Now that's a total threat of 10 compared to Mary and Pippin's willpower of six. You'll need to play some cards from your hand to pass the high test. Mary can spend one resource token to play Halfling Determination on himself. Choose a Hobbit character. Action. Choose a Hobbit character. That character gets plus two attack, plus plus two willpower, plus two attack, and plus two defense until the end of the phase. Uh, so giving him a total of plus two for a total of eight so far. Luckily, the Green Hill Country offers the Hobbits plenty of spaces to hide, so they also get a special plus one willpower bonus when hiding here for a final total of ten. Just enough to pass the hide test. Just where is that? Ah, special rule right here. Characters get plus one to their willpower while committed to high test in Green Hill Country. It's down there. It's not up here. It's down there. Okay. Passing the high test also means the Evil Crow in the staging area is discarded. After you make a successful high test, discard Evil Crow. All right. We will discard him. That means you earn three quest points and can place three progress tokens on the progress track. One, two, three. Just enough to move on from Green Hill Country. Oh, um, I guess I guess I discard these events. Doesn't tell me what to do with them after they're done. So I'll put them over here in a little discard pile. We'll make we'll make that. My, you know, I'll put it down here so maybe you can see it on the overhead shot. All right, so there's my discard pile, draw pile, heroes. All right, that's that's something. Uh, now ready all your characters and turn the page for the next turn of the adventure. Oh, here's the hide test rules. Hide test. When you turn over a card with the keyword hide followed by a number, for example, hide two, you must make a hide test. A hide test is similar to making progress. You can exhaust any number of characters you like to commit those characters to the hide test. Next. Discard the top X cards of the encounter deck, where X is equal to the hide X value. 
So if a card says Hide 2, as the Black Rider does, discard the top two cards of the Encounter deck to make the Hide test. Add the total threat of the discarded cards and compare it to the total willpower of the characters committed to the Hide test. If the total willpower is greater than or equal, uh, greater than or equal to the total threat, success! You've passed the Hide test. If the total threat is greater than the total willpower, bad news. Okay. I guess we don't want to do that. Your state of play so far. If you're following the playthrough, this is what things should look like at this point in the adventure. We got a Black Rider. We have, uh, for, oh, there, there, there. Okay, everybody's ready. Uh, discard piles over here. I'm a little bit different than they are, just for purposes of the camera. Uh, but yeah, we'll we'll call that good. Oh, gotta take those right back off. Bomb for long. After again evading the Black Riders, the hobbits travel across the Marish and find themselves at Bamfurlong, home of the notorious Farmer Maggot. Remember, you can ready your exhausted characters at the end of the turn, and then it's time to take your next turn, following all the usual steps. First, give your heroes one more resource token. Oop, we didn't ready Frodo. One, two, three, four. Then draw a card. It's Farmer Maggot! Imagine that. Farmer Maggot. It will only require two progress tokens to move on from Bomb for Long, but there's a Black Rider in the staging area, so you'll need to commit a few characters to the quest, and could do with some help just in case. You can play Hobbit Pipe from your hand to attach it to Pippin. So we have a second Hobbit Pipe on Pippin. Here, uh, let's do this. Let's do this the easy way. Although as a new player, maybe I don't know what all those cards say, so maybe it would be better to have it sticking at the bottom. Uh, okay. Now spend two of Pippin's resource tokens to play Smoke Rings and give both Mary and Pippin. So Smoke Rings is a two cost uh, spirit event. Sorry, two cost blue symbol, don't know what that means, event. Action. Reduce your threat by one for each pipe you control. Each hero with a pipe attachment gets plus one willpower until the end of the phase. Well, I don't know what threat is. It seems like that might be important. But, all right. So each hero with a pipe attachment gets plus one willpower until the end of the phase. Should I have put... Can I not read? Let's go back to back end. Hobbit Pipe, add it to your hand. Underneath the character's card, let's give it to Pippin. Okay, so we did that. And then Hobbit Pipe from your hand and attach it to Pippin. Smoke Rings, give both Mary and Pippin plus one for the turn. I, 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 think, I think maybe we should have played one of those on... Um, played, played those on... One of those on Mary, huh? That sounds like that's what that's supposed to say. It's okay. We figured it out. We're good. Okay. So we played Smoke Rings. We reduced our threat by one for each pipe. Uh, we control. And then each hero with a pipe attachment gets plus one willpower until the end of the phase. Okay. So, plus one willpower here, plus one willpower here. They're both questing for three. Uh, commit them both to the quest. Two plus one is three. Two plus one is three for combo of six against four up here so far. That seems good. Time to draw an encounter card. It's Lure of the Ring. Surge. When revealed, the first player must either exhaust the one ring or raise his threat by three. So you have to exhaust the one ring. Oh. This card talks about raising threat, which is a rule we're not using in this first adventure. Ah! So you'll have to exhaust the one ring instead, meaning Frodo can't use it this turn. I guess then you do have to do... If you can't pay one part of a cost, you have to pay another, the other part of the cost. That seems reasonable. Even worse, Lure of the Ring has the Surge rule, so you have to draw another encounter card. Great. It's crawling towards him. Oh, goody. Peril. Hide two. When revealed, if you'd failed a high test this phase, remove each character you control from the quest. Hmm. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, so we have to make a hide two test. Ah, Surge is a special rule found on certain encounter cards. It is a special rule. When you draw a card with Surge on it, resolve its effects, then draw another encounter card. So we did that, we surged, resolved its effects, and we surged into crawling towards him. Hide two. All right. Um, Okay, well, I guess we'll just make, we'll send everybody here to the quest. So three, four, five, or sorry, send everybody here to the hide test. So hide two. Number one, an evil crow for two threat. And number two, another treachery, another crawling towards them with no threat on it. So we beat that, no problem. Perhaps a little overkill, but there you go. All right. Now, it doesn't tell us to. It kind of just stops there. But I'm assuming that we need to finish resolving the quest because we committed Mary and Pippin to the quest. Um, there's nothing telling me to do that, but I, I feel like that's the right thing to do. So uh, three plus three is six against, oh, I guess that goes away. It gets four, gives us two progress, which we put there. Awesome, okay. Next page, I assume, Buckleberry Ferry. This is the final stage of your first adventure. Make it to Buckleberry Ferry and the hobbits will be safe for now. But that may be easier said than done. Step one, this is the final stage of your first adventure. Time for another turn. Um, give each hero a resource token, then draw a card. I'm assuming we should be refreshing even though it doesn't tell us to. But we get to do that at the end of the turn, so... Okay. Uh, give each hero another resource token. All right, I'm getting a little flush here with resources. Then draw a card, another smoke rings. Now, since you're setting out for Buckleberry Ferry with Farmer Maggot having offered to take you in his cart, it only seems right to spend all three of Mary's resource tokens to play Farmer Maggot. I'm not sure I see where Farmer Maggot offered to take us in his cart, but... All right, so three resource tokens. One, two, three, and we'll play Farmer Maggot. Farmer Maggot, response. After you enter play, deal one damage to an enemy engaged with you. I don't know what that means. Deal two damage instead of that enemy's engagement cost is higher than your threat. I also don't know what that means. But hey, golden rule. Doesn't matter, right? Right. Uh, okay. Commit Farmer Maggot to the quest straight away. Really? Okay. You're going to need to make a lot of progress to get to Buckleberry Ferry, so commit Frodo, Mary, and Pippin. So Frodo... Mary and oop, Pippin. Okay. Since you're going to need a lot of willpower either way, oh sorry, if any high tests come up, you'll have to hope Sam can deal with them by himself. Since you're gonna need a lot of willpower either way, spend two resource tokens from Frodo's resource pool to play this copy of Frodo's intuition from your hand, which usually lets you draw four more cards as well. Okay. Our four cards are Strength of Will, Another Frodo's Intuition, Common Cause, and Halfling Determination. And Frodo's Intuition, just a reminder, each hero you control gets plus one willpower until the end of the round. Then draw one card for each Hobbit hero you control. So, everybody's plus one, or all the heroes are plus one. Farmer Maggot is an ally. I'm assuming he does not get the plus one. Next, draw a card from the encounter deck. Lure of the Ring, Surge. The first player must either exhaust the one ring or raise his threat by three. Well, we, we've seen this before, so we exhaust the one ring. We can't use it to do whatever the one ring does. Not really clear what it does right now. But then this card surges. Wait. Wait. 
surges into piercing cry. I, I, I guess it's supposed to surge. The, the step here is a little unclear, actually. Uh, it says, go ahead and resolve the current step of the quest, but we just saw a surge here, resolve its effects, then draw another encounter card. And I'm assuming we have to resolve the effects of that encounter card before we do the rest of the step. It only seems logical. Piercing Cry. Peril. When revealed, search the encounter deck and discard pile for a Nazgul enemy. Either add it to the staging area or put it into play, engage with the first player. Shuffle the encounter deck. Well, that seems bad. Okay. That seems really bad. Now go ahead and resolve the current step of the quest. Frodo, Mary, Pippin, and Farmer Maggot have a total willpower of 10, with the bonus from Frodo's intuition, but against the Black Rider's threat of four... Wait a minute. Hmm. Okay, so ha hang with me here. So we drew Lord of the Ring. It has Surge on it. We have to resolve what it says and then do the surge. But when I do the surge, I get Piercing Cry, which tells me to search the encounter deck and discard pile for a Nazgul enemy, which the Black Rider says Nazgul and is an enemy. Do I not have eight up here instead of four? Hmm. We'll, we'll just, we'll, 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 we'll see, okay. Uh, Frodo, Mary, Pippin, and Farmer Maggot have a total willpower of 10 with a bonus from Frodo's intuition. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sorry, six, seven, then with Frodo's intuition, eight, nine, 10. Sam's not committed, he's just hanging out. But against the Black Rider's threat of four, it won't be enough to make it to Buckleberry Ferry, but maybe that should be eight. You can spend two of Pippin's resource tokens to play Smoke rings, giving Mary and Pippin plus one each, but that's still only eight progress tokens. You need one more to escape the Black Riders. Things are looking grim. Playing Frodo's Intuition allowed you to draw four cards, including Strength of Will, which would put two progress tokens on a uh, location, but you have to exhaust a character with a blue star symbol to do so, and Pippin is already exhausted. But there's hope. You can play Common Cause. Action, exhaust one hero you control to choose and ready a different hero. Allowing you to exhaust one hero you control to ready another. So, we play that. We exhaust Sam. Oop. To ready Pippin. And then play Strength of Will. Zero cost. Blue spirit, I guess, event. Response, after you travel to a location, exhaust a, a spirit character to place two progress tokens on that location. In this case, well after we've traveled to a location. All right. So uh, exhaust Sam to ready Pippin, then play Strength of Will and exhaust Ma Mary? No, Pippin to place two more progress tokens on Buckleberry Ferry. It says success. Hmm, but 10 against 8 is only 2 more if we're playing with the cards and the text it says on them. I'm confused as a new player. Maybe you are too. Uh, allies. Farmer Maggot is an ally card. Allies are characters. They're just like heroes, only they don't gain resource tokens and can't play cards. They can, however, commit to quests and high tests, which makes them very useful for your heroes to have around. Obviously, uh, this magazine, something's confused here. So we're going to play by the way the magazine says. So I am going to pretend that we didn't have to reveal Pierce and Cry, that Black Rider didn't come back out, and we put... Um, We put all the progress tokens 
We needed to. On. On there. Okay. Success. All right. Turn the page. Over the Brandywine River. So that's it. Success. Well, an arrow escape, at least in your first adventure, and a first look at some of the rules for Lord of the Rings, the card game. But where next? Replaying the adventure. In this adventure, you've shown we've shown you just a few of the rules of the game. In future issues, we'll, we'll be introducing new rules, returning to take a look at those you've already seen in a lot more depth. If you're comfortable with the rules for readying and exhausting characters, playing cards, and making progress, you can replay the adventure, but shuffle the player deck first and see if you can work out your own strategy. For an even greater challenge, shuffle the encounter deck at the start of the game, too, and shuffle the discard pile back into it whenever the encounter deck runs out. But be warned, the Black Riders will present a real challenge indeed. Mary and Fatty Bulger. We included Mary in this adventure to make things a bit easier, but what if you wanted to play the adventure again? Why not play it without Mary for an additional challenge? Or play it using Fatty Bulger as one of your heroes instead? The next adventure. The hobbits might have escaped across the Brandywine River and made it to Creek Hollow, but much danger lies on the road ahead. We'll be back to look at, at the next step in the hobbits' journey in issue three. In the meantime, though, we'll be meeting a mysterious ranger uh, for, next issues, for the next issue's adventure. You can get a taste of what lies in wait for the hobbits opposite. Okay, some story text there. And hero cards and player cards explained. Uh, the Lord of the Rings, the card game, is played using several different types of cards. There are hero cards representing your heroes on their quest, plus player cards and encounter cards, which each come in a few different types. You can read about hero cards and player cards below. Heroes are the, are the main characters that you as a player... Uh, heroes are the, are the... Hero cards. Heroes are the main characters that you, as the player, control during the game. Heroes are represented by hero cards, and players use them to attack, defend, quest, and acquire resources. Each player begins the game with one or more heroes, and not usually more than three, under their control. Player cards and hero cards have a card back featuring the one ring. A card's type is indicated at the bottom of the card. Ally cards represent characters, friends, followers, creatures, and hirelings that assist a player's heroes on the quest. Attachment cards represent weapons, armor, artifacts. That's an interesting way to spell artifacts with an E. Uh, equipment, skills, and conditions. Event cards uh, represent actions, spells, and other unexpected twists that might occur during the game. Encounter cards. During the game, you play against the encounter deck, which represents the villains, hazards, places, and circumstances that stand between the heroes and successful completion of their quest. There are four types of encounter card. Enemy cards, treachery cards, objective, and location cards. Objective cards represent a range of different elements, each of vital importance to the heroes in their quest, from a sought-after friend or enemy to keys that allow the uh, uh, players to advance to the next stage of the quest, or artifacts required to overcome a particular challenge. The One Ring, card number E1, is an objective card. In fact, it's the most important objective card in the whole game. Unlike most objective cards, you don't shuffle the One Ring into the encounter deck at the beginning of the game. Rather, the ring bearer, Frodo Baggins, starts the game carrying it. Enemy cards represent the villains, creatures, monsters, and minions that attempt to capture, destroy, or mislead the heroes as they pursue their quest. The Black Rider is an enemy card. Treachery cards represent traps, curses, maneuvers, pitfalls, and other surprises the heroes may have to confront during their quest. And location cards represent the perilous places and occasionally safe havens that the, in which the heroes will travel along the way. End of issue one. So, as a new player, what did I learn? Well, I learned that heroes earn resources, that you have to match the color of their symbol to the color of the symbol on the cards when you play them. Uh, I learned how to draw cards, I learned how to exhaust, and I learned how to do hide tests, which for as often as I had to do hide tests, I think they must come up an awful lot in this game. All right. As a new player, I was confused. I feel like the magazine uh, had me put Hobbit Pipe on the wrong character one time, and it, it actually was very confused about who Mary and Pippin were, which, let's, let's be honest, there's probably a lot of people who are confused about which one's Mary and which one's Pippin. In fact, 
uh, Billy Boyd and Don Monahan uh, tend to say that people don't have any idea which one of them is who. Anyway. Uh, but there were two occasions where that happened. Both, uh, first was when, where Hobbit Pipe was being placed, and then later when I was using, um, Common Cause to exhaust Sam to ready Pippin, and then it had me play Strength of Will, which required me to exhaust a Blue Star Spirit character to place the progress tokens. I'm not really clear on, um, when I can play certain cards, because... I don't know when I can play allies. I don't know uh, when I can play attachments. I think it's at the beginning of the round, but it doesn't really tell me really clearly. I'm not sure about playing events. It seems like we had traveled to a location and had been at location for a while before I could play Strength of Will, but anyway. Here's how I'm going to end each video. I'm going to look back on this product as an experienced player and give some thoughts. First thought, Lord of the Rings is a hard game. There's a lot you have to remember. The round structure has a lot going on, and it is kind of nice to have something holding your hand as you go through that. But I, I feel like I would have appreciated a very basic list of the phases to say this is the, the resource phase. This is the planning phase. This is the uh, this is the quest phase, travel, combat, and refresh. That's still a lot. I understand that, but it would have helped in the later pages, knowing that oh yes, every turn I have to refresh my characters. Every turn at the beginning of the round, I I do get a new resource. I do get to draw a new card, because uh, it didn't always tell me that every time. If I'm leaning on the the uh, the rules, not the narrative text, but kind of the rules narrative text, that that the instructional text. There we go. That's the word I'm looking for. The instructional text in the magazine. If I'm leaning on that to guide me through this, I don't know that I would have done that every time. Um, the high test, I think, was an unnecessary uh, unnecessary complication at this point uh, because it doesn't happen like almost ever. I mean, there are very few quests that have that sort of a mechanic, whether it's called a hide test or sailing test or any of those others where you have to keep characters aside to exhaust them to do stuff. Sure, that's nice to know, but it doesn't happen very often, and it's not a core part of the game. It's not essential to your understanding of playing the game. I did like, uh, I, I did like the cards being in order and having that sort of prescribed playthrough. I think that was uh, that would be a good thing for FFG to adopt if they were to do a revised core set. Fantasy Flight, just saying. Um, that might make some things a little easier on new players because I do I do like having a a set of instructions to walk you through your first game. Now, this the magazine was very confused a couple of times, and uh, it was very confusing a, a couple of times. And I, uh, I had not played this in advance, so I was, at times, I felt kind of lost and had to actually lean on my knowledge as someone who has played the game before. Um, let's talk about the whole Buckleberry Fairy thing because I should, with Lure of the Ring, I should have had to surge into Piercing Cry. When revealed, search the encounter deck and discard pile for a Nazgul enemy, either add it to the staging area or put it into play, engage with the first player. I guess I could have put it into play, engage with me. But I don't know what that means. I don't know what engage with me means if I'm a new player. Also, I'm not sure I really want to put a five attack enemy engaged with a bunch of hobbits. Farmer Maggot probably is not going to be long for this world. Except they're all exhausted, so... Look, that's a miss. That is a huge miss. And were I actually a new player, I would find that very confusing. Because Surge has been explained, but... Anyway. Overall, <clears throat> issue one... We'll see. I'm not going to give it a star rating, I'm not going to give it a percentage rating, I'm not going to do anything like that. I think... 
you having watched this can evaluate this based on uh, your knowledge level and skill level with the game. Um, would it be enough for me as a new player to be interested and to want to continue? I mean, yeah. I, I would be curious about what was coming up next, although I would be very, very confused about a couple of things with regards to the round structure and when, whether or not, whether or not uh, keywords like surge happen when all the time, because apparently they didn't. Anyway, that's it for video one. If you've got questions, leave them in the comments or shoot us an email, cardboardofthering at gmail.com or find us on Twitter. Also, you can, uh, we do our podcast every three weeks. You can come hang out with us on Discord, listen to us do the show live. You can make jokes in the Discord and see if you can get us to, I don't know, break up on air or shenanigans or whatever. Anyway, it's pretty free-flowing. You'll, if this video is not an indication of that, it's pretty free-flowing. But, so that's it for issue one. And so, yeah, we will see you next time for issue number two of Lord of the Rings, the card game, the magazine.